Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Wednesday. It's October 12th. This will be our chart lesson for the day, and here's a look at our daily chart again. You can see it was another uh, inside day. Uh, we did close lower still, though. We when we uh, opened lower and closed lower, and we couldn't trade as high. So I think prices are going to break lower here, and most likely drop on down to this blue. Trend channel line. Um, that's what I think is going to happen. I think once we break this uh, previous low here, or this low here, because I think we already broke it. Uh, so once we break this pre this previous low here, we could, prices could give away a little bit. We'll see. We're way oversold, so it wouldn't surprise me if we didn't break lower and bounce. But I think prices are trying their best to make another low lower than this one so i think that's what's i think that's what's in the cards for right now now how low we go uh, if we if prices start dropping here i would assume we're probably going to go to the other side of this trend channel line which is this blue line here now if we just drop straight down you're looking at prices down around 3400 but it, they may creep on down this way and we could get on down to 33 close to the 3300 range so we'll see what happens um, and even then I don't think we've seen the end of this bear market so um, anyway that's what we're looking at it looks like more of the same I would expect we might get more of the same tomorrow another sideways to down day as well so anyway let's uh, let's flip over to our intraday chart and you'll see it looks like a range day that closed that closed on its lows basically so let's flip over there and take a look and here's a look at it uh, the blue is the overnight highs and lows actually this low is not the overnight lows I ended up moving it down uh, the overnight lows were right in here and you can see we bounced there a few times as well but we had more consistent turns once the day got going down here so I ended up moving this down and we consistently turn off the highs right across here. So I ended up just making this pink channel in here just to make it easier to see uh, within the blue channel. And, and of course we got trends up and down within that. So uh, but yeah, once the day got rolling, we, we had trouble rallying anywhere above 36, maybe 36, 15, 36, 20 area. So but let's zoom in here, go through the trades, and uh, wrap up the day. And notice, too, uh, we'll talk about it when we get there, but there was a FOMC meeting uh, minutes released today at 1 o'clock, and you can see it. it it's not as crazy as it is sometimes, but it uh, it definitely created some volatility here. So you probably want to be out of that, especially uh, from what I'm understanding. Ninja traders change y'all's uh, anytime there's a high volatility news that you're having to pay something like eleven thousand dollars. That's what I've been told. I, obviously, I don't use Ninja Trader for my broker, uh, and they haven't done that. My broker is not started doing that so maybe it's just uh, for ninja trader maybe it's just newer traders I'm not sure what ninja traders doing over there but from what I understand that any, before any high volatility news item they're putting you at full margin so that'd be uh, and somebody said that was 11 grand so uh, so you need to be flat regardless <laughs> most of you anyway so you know be flat Usually on a regular FOMC day, I would say be flat an hour going into it. But uh, something like this, just as minutes release, 15 to 30, 30 minutes tops, 15 is probably good. Um, so anyway, let's zoom on in here at the start of the day and go through these trades. And 7 o'clock came as we're kind of climbing here, and I don't see anything that would make me want to go long right there. Uh, and then just the bottom drop side of it. And that's probably, actually that's not the, uh, I was thinking it might be some of these, one of these other news is the, 
the, of course, you got the PPI, which is basically inflation. And uh, so, unless somebody, well, let me just look. Maybe this is what. Maybe that is what this is. I guess that is PPI. Okay, it came out at 7:30. So yeah, I guess it is. So uh, once again, you wanted to be flat there. I didn't. I didn't put the the box around this one, but I would say I would say right in there you, you want to be flat. So there's not much trading really until almost eight o'clock today, and we come back, create this trend line. And then we confirm it here on a second entry short, very bearish bar. And then we actually get a failed second entry long right there. And again, right off the key entry point in the EMA. So I, uh, I like going short there. And you got plenty of room to this low. So uh, we drop on down, make a new low. And then finally we get a break here. Let's zoom on in a little bit where this is easier to see. And you can see the correction. We get a close outside move to a new high. This actually breaks higher and turns down. I wouldn't trade that on the engulfing bar because it's really kind of sideways there, but I wouldn't have any problem going short right there. This is very bearish and uh, plenty of room to the lows, and we're probably going to make a new low here. Um, and if at the very least, we're going to test. Um, well, we've already tested the overnight lows right there. Yep. So this is the new low that came about later. So, but as long as you got room to here, I'd probably be okay with that trade. And it actually drops on down, creates a new low and bounces. Um, I didn't mark this trade. It's so far away from the MA, and it does break lower and turn up. So it's one that you might, again, you might try to catch an important low on. Um, so I'll mark it at least green. And if you didn't enter there, you don't get a chance to enter. They just rock it straight up. And then we just kind of start working sideways here, really. But um, you get your close outside of this green channel. You move up. There's actually a reversal here, but I didn't like it because it's right into all that resistance right across there. I think it's too dangerous. Um, of course, it, it rockets up and then rockets right back down again. And again, we're just chopping sideways. Finally, you get what you could at least argue is at least a triple test there. It doesn't have a very good signal bar. There's probably room to get out here. So you may trade that one. I, I'm just not crazy about the signal bar, so I didn't mark it. And then, of course, we're still just kind of, we move lower, and we're just still kind of chopping sideways. There's nothing really good going on there. Until finally you get this little channel working up. You get a close outside, a couple of legs up, and the big bearish bar right there uh, that actually went higher first and then turned out. I like going short there, uh, especially if you got plenty of room back to the EMA. And it's mostly sideways stuff anyway, so even if the EMA was close, you may not worry too much about it. Uh, it'd be nice if you could get a lower high or reversal here, but you don't do it, and it just drops, and the bottom just falls out of it. We get a little bit of an overshoot here, and that leads to a break. Um, there's actually a channel working up here first before we go into the sideways stuff. You can see that, and you get the close outside, and you don't quite make a new high, and it just gives you a second entry short. Um, so I like I like possibly going short there on that second entry. Uh, just looking for a scalp, and, and it comes back and gives you a triple test, but unfortunately the signal bar is no good. And it comes back and tests it yet again, and finally you get a fairly bare signal bar. But there's also a channel working up there, and it does still have some stem on it, and it's a really big bar. So I marked it um, green. It's one you might consider, but I think you're better off just skipping it. I mean, you're playing the range here really is what you're doing, so you don't worry so much about this channel coming up. But it's still got an iffy signal bar. It's kind of right into, you're going short right into the middle of the little trading range. So it's got some, it's not a perfect setup, but it turns out to be a really good move. Drops down and then it bounces. There's a higher low here, but I don't think you want to trade that. It's moved too far. Um... You could call this a reversal right here, but with that 
correction coming down, I would wait and see if you get a second entry or a higher low or something. And you actually get a higher low on a second entry right here. So I like that entry. And that look at that thing rocket up. That was a nice quick trap. And of course it finds resistance up here and turns straight down. Um, you don't really get a setup up there. You, you don't get a reversal or anything. It just drops all the way to the lows and bounces again. No setup down here. Runs up, you get a close outside, tries to go higher once, pulls back, gives you a higher low, and then goes higher. Maybe you take that trade right there. The problem is you've already got a break and a new high, but a lot of times you'll get two legs up. Uh, and We did just come off the lows on a double bottom down here, so there's a good chance we're going higher. Um, so maybe you take that trade. Uh, notice it does make another swing up before it comes back and sells off and then uh, you get two legs back here and uh, a big bullish bar uh, it's so big that you know I don't know it, it's actually it's only 16 ticks but it looks huge but the bars have, are not quite as big today as they what some of what we have seen, been seeing so that's really in the big scheme of things it's not a huge bar and it's a second entry long and uh, nice bullish bar so maybe you take that trade uh, either way a few minutes later you get a first entry short and a second entry short and it's also made a new higher so first entry second entry long the signal bar you couldn't take on a long on a second entry but because it's a triple test and also a failed second entry short really not because it's a triple test but because it's a failed second second entry short and it's also a triple test. So there's multiple reasons to like that trade. Plenty of room to get out before that double top. So I like that trade. And it just keeps chopping higher, but I don't see anything else up there that you could really trade. And then suddenly you get a close outside. Uh, another move down. Notice this yellow channel too. You can see the yellow channel. You get plus you get the close outside of the group. This is a spike in channel two on the screen channel, and you get a close outside move to a new low, and then it's running higher again. Um, this is another one I didn't mark that you could argue for to at least be green. You can clearly see you came back once, twice, three times, and look how bullish. The problem I didn't like with it is it, it's just look how flat the EMA is. Um, we're still kind of below it. Uh, it, and you really wouldn't want to enter that on the engulfing bar. I don't think so, but it is a triple test. It does close very bullish. So nothing wrong with going long there. If you really wanted to runs up, turns down right at the highs where it kind of turned down the last time there. And that is a second entry, but the signal bar there is no good. And it comes back and it keeps trying to go higher, but it can't. But notice how it's closing higher every time and you're getting more and more stem. That tells you they're probably going to push it through there. Uh, it does not mean it's going to go anywhere, but it does mean it's probably going to break through. And then maybe you could fade it from the highs, although you don't get a chance to. It just drops. Then you correct back here. Uh, that looks too congested to be taking. Uh, drops on down again, and that's just a first entry. This bar is no good anyway. Can't this first entry on a green bullish bar. So it drops down, makes a new low. There is a triple test down here, way away from the EMA. It's just so congested. But if you look at it, it's it's really only like five ticks. So it's an it's one, and it is a higher low too because you got a double bottom than a higher low. But that's you tested it, you made the low, you tested it once, twice. Uh, there's some reasons to like that trade. So that was loud. I apologize. My hand accidentally bumped my headphones. Sometimes I, that makes a loud noise. So if it did, my apologies. Hopefully it didn't. But anyway, this takes off. Pretty nice trade. You get a close outside, and they try to take it up multiple times and can't. The next thing you know, you're running lower or running down. Uh, there is a failure right here. Notice that um, 
there's a new high right here. It tries to go higher once, then twice. But that's just so congested. That just looks like one leg down to me. So I don't think you can trade that as a reversal or anything. Um, it's just a first entry. And it drops on down. And then we're just chopping. And that, can take, that takes you into this 1 o'clock news item. And so be flat. And there's nothing in there prior anyway. We're just kind of working sideways. And so you'd skip all that. And it kind of settles down about here. Um, notice you got a new low, first entry, second entry, and this is a higher low and all off that trend line. Look how bullish that is. Again, I don't know that I'll wait until I can go long up the top of that bar. I mean, it's 25 ticks. That's a re relatively large but uh, bar. So, But when it breaks lower and turns up, you might trade it when it passes by here, you might drop a limit order a few ticks back and see if you can get filled. I don't know if you could or not. I'll be honest with you. I'm not sure. And it just continues to chop up. There's not really anything here. There is a second entry here, but this was an inside bar. Um, it looks kind of sideways as well, a little congested. So I just don't think you can go long there. Uh, I think that's one that you're better off to skip to skip and you can see how quickly it turns down it probably would have got a scout but it's just not worth risking and then finally we get a failed break lower and a higher low here trading back into the range after breaking out and failing and then it runs up here and breaks out the top and fails uh, there's you another entry again congestion there too and notice he's got room to get out before he gets to his close last closes doesn't matter because it ends up going much further than that but um, bounces again and we just start working down but I don't see anything this is all too sideways and congested uh, they're all too sideways we do bounce down here no setup sideways uh, and that just kind of takes you into 2 230 there's just not much there nothing that would uh, strike me as wanting to go long or short there so Anyway, that's how I saw it. Um, interesting day. Uh, at least at least the range, you had some consistent lows and stuff and highs at times. And so it gave us a few trades where a lot of times you won't get any trade setups at all range-wise on these. And then most all the channels played out. If you go back and look at all of them, you get your channel, a break, and a new low on just about every one of them I drew. So uh, it was kind of, it was at least a little more orderly today. Uh, if that's a word you want to call it um, for a range day, I guess. So, but uh, we'll see what tomorrow brings. Again, I, it wouldn't surprise me if we just get more of the same. So, but uh, I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'm going to wrap it up, and we'll be back again to do it tomorrow. I'm done for today. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next.